Hello everyone, welcome to Raw Online. Today we will discuss our new chapter in CRASH that is biomolecules, right? As its name suggests, bios are the molecules, that means what are the biomolecules? They are the molecules which are necessary for the uh, for conducting the all uh, for conducting all the processes of our body right to maintain uh, to uh, uh, recovery of the cell membrane for the morphogenesis for the development right so they uh, the biomolecules are the substances which are required from the body cells to uh, metabolize all the functions right there are some uh, the bio macromolecules some are the bio micromolecules right so when we talk about in uh, what uh, we discuss in that chapter that is about the bio uh, macromolecules like the carbohydrate the protein the fats right uh, the, after that we will discuss about the lipid also the structures of the proteins right and uh, uh, the uh, what types of the carbohydrates, the types of the sugars, the amino acids nature, right? Uh, about the DNA, all these things comes under that chapter, right? And we will discuss it in the form of the questions. That is the easiest way to memorize anything, right? If we know about the applications to how to apply it, then will uh, learn it easily right so now come to the first question right which one of the following is not a strictly a bio macro molecule right as we know that the protein the carbohydrate and the fats they are and the nucleic acids they are called the bio macro molecules because we need them in the large amount right but uh, strictly in case of lipids, we cannot uh, say that these lipid is the strictly bio macromolecule, right? The answer is true, but why it's so? Come to here. Lipids are not strictly uh, macromolecule. Why? Because their molecular weight do not exceed 800 Dalton, right? But they put under the macromolecule fraction. Why? Because they when we grind a tissue, right when we grind a tissue a cell membrane or the other membrane are broken into some pieces right they are broken in some into some pieces and forms the vesicles which are not water soluble right they are not the water soluble that's why they are they comes under the macromolecule category but strictly they are not the macromolecule so the answer is lipids right now the question is in that options three more options are given there that is the proteins the polysaccharides and the nucleic acids so what they are right come to the proteins proteins are also the macromolecule learn this point right memorize it properly proteins are the macromolecules which is formed by the amino acids which are formed by the amino acid that's why when we uh, learn about the digestive system, we know that the end product of the protein is the amino acids, right? The end product of the protein is the amino acids. So, proteins are the larger size molecules, right? Proteins are the larger size molecules, that is macromolecule. They are also known as the polymers of the structural units, right? Called the amino acids. Total 20 different amino acids exist, exist in the proteins, right? And hundreds of thousands of these amino acids are attached to each other in the form of long chain to form a protein. Clear, right? So that's why because there is a long chain to form a protein, that's why they are called the polypeptides also now because to attach the to attach with each other there is the peptide bonds right there is the peptide bonds which connect uh, the uh, units subunits of that clear so that's why the protein is also known as the protein is the macromolecule now come to the next when we talk about the polysaccharides as we know that polysaccharides that means it is related with the carbohydrates and all right starch carbohydrates so polysaccharides are also the long chain of monosaccharides right they are also the long chains of the monosaccharide which is linked by the glycosidic bonds 
learn that properly that poly in polysaccharide glycosidic bonds are present and the important polysaccharides are the starch the glycogen the cellulose which is not digested by the humans right and that's why the cellulosic and because why because cellulosic enzymes are absent right it is related with the digestive system but because just because of each and every particle each and every cell and all these things are made up of the biomolecules that's why we have to know about the biomolecules to understand other chapters properly right these are composed of the glucose actually right and starch and glycogen serves as short term energy sources right the glycogen and the starch acts as the short term energy so uh, energy which stores in the plants and the animals right which stores in the plants and the animals respectively clear so the glucose when we talk about the glucose monomers so these glucose monomers are attached with or we can say the linked with the alpha glycosidic bonds right these glucose monomers are linked with alpha glycosidic bonds glucose monomers are linked with the gly alpha glycosidic bonds clear so you have to learn these points these are the questions direct questions related with the uh, biology in biomolecules right when we go through the chemistry then it is more typical clear so in terms of when we talk about the bio then these uh, informations are relevant uh, from the examination point of view right now come to the last one that is nucleic acids what are the nucleic acids they are the main information right nucleic acids carries the information right to the cell or by directing the processes of the protein synthesis right actually they carry the informations uh, uh, that's why to determine the inherited characteristics of the every living thing right we need the nucleic acids right two main classes of nucleic acids are the dna that is deoxyribonucleic acid right which is the genetic material and the ribonucleic acid so both are the genetic material of our body and as we know that the rna are of three types that is mrna rrna trna right that is the messenger rna the ribosomal rna and the transfer rna and we know that the process of transcription right so for the uh, uh, mrna is necessary clear for the formation of the dna right and it also carries the uh, uh, genetic information from one generation to the another clear so that's why we say that the nucleic acids are the main information carrying molecules right they are the main information carrying molecules of the cell right so we uh, now you can understand why the lipid is not strictly a biomacromolecule clear come to the next question the secondary metabolite that acts as a toxin is now the first question in that question is what are the secondary metabolites right what are the secondary metabolites secondary metabolites are also known as the specialized metabolites the uh, they are the toxins the secondary products or the natural products right clear they are the secondary metabolites are also known as the specialized metabolites so toxins secondary products or the natural products comes under that category right so what are, what are they actually they are the organic compounds right they are the organic compounds which is produced by the microorganisms like the bacteria the fungus or any kind of the plant even right which are not directly involved in the uh, normal growth right which are not directly involved in the normal growth the development and the reproduction of the organism so these are called the secondary molecule secondary metabolites if they are involved directly in the processes right then they are called the primary metabolites clear so now according to that question the secondary metabolite that acts as a toxin the answer is abrin right the abrin is acts as a toxin so the question is what is now abrin what is the carotenoids what are the curcumin right the monoterpenes so see 
when we talk about the carotenoids they are the pigments right carotenoids they are the pigments as we know that vitamin a right we know that na vitamin a that is uh, the carotenoid pigment right they are the pigments which are found in the plants the algae right the photosynthetic bacteria clear these pigments produce a bright yellow reddish and orange colors in plants the vegetables and the fruits that's why we say the vitamin a containing fruits are the yellowish yellowish orangish uh, fruit fruits like the papaya right all these things clear so these carotenoids acts as a type of the antioxidants for the human right so that's why by the use of vitamin a the obese management can be managed right in case of the obesity to treat the obesity we use the carotenoid substances right clear because of just because of their antioxidant properties clear so there are more than 600 different types of the carotenoids and just because of the antioxidant properties uh we know that the uh, vitamin a containing carrot right carrot is used as a uh, antioxidant food right for the obese persons right and it helps to manage the uh excess weight actually it reduces the excessive weight right now come to the curcumin curcumin that is uh, obtained from the curcuma longa right that is obtained from the curcuma longa that is the name of the haldi right that is known as the haldi that is turmeric so curcumin is a bright yellow chemical which is produced by the curcuma longa plant curcumin is a bright yellow chemical which is produced by the curcuma longa plants right and it is the principal curcuminoid of the turmeric right that is the name of the alkaloid right which is present in the turmeric and turmeric is obtained from the curcuma longa right which is the member of the ginger family or we can say the family name is the gingivaraci right the name of the family is the gingivaraci so it's a so, uh, it is a solid as in the herbal supplement the cosmetic ingredients the food flavoring and the food coloring also we used uh, we use that turmeric in the coloring of the uh, cloth also right and you know that the other properties of that turmeric is it is anti infectious anti cancerous right it is anti infectious anti cancerous clear so that's why we used it in food right we uh, use it uh, with the milk to prevent uh, from prevent uh, preventing from the infections right so this is the curcumin now third one is the abrin which is the answer that abrin is a natural poison actually right that abrin is a natural poison its seed is just like that oval shaped right rest of the part is the reddish but the apex portion is just appearance of that black spot just like that clear its appearance is just like that actually it uh, when we see that seeds na it's look beautiful just because of its the co its color combination and when it appears in the group then right but it's toxic but it's toxic right so it is the natural poison which is found in the seeds of a plant which that plant seed is the rosary pea right and which is also known as the jequirity pea right these seeds are reddish with a black spot covering one end see that black spot covering at one end right 
that abrin is similar to the resin which is a toxin that is found in the seeds of a plant that is castor bean plant right that resin is found in the castor bean plants clear so that's why the abrin is the answer because it is the natural poison right but when we talk about the monoterpenes what is that monoterpenes you know that and we aware from that that is the class of the terpenes right that consists of the two isoprene units uh, which have the molecular formula that is c10 h16 right these may be the linear or the containing ring, rings right and these are the modified terpenes is uh, such as those containing the oxygen functionally and missing methyl group right and they are called the monoterpenoids right these are called the monoterpenoids and we used these monoterpenes in the oils right these are present in the turpentine oils and all these things right so these are the monoterpenes so the answer of that question is the abrin clear now come to the next the secondary metabolite that is alkaloid in nature right that is alkaloid in nature when we talk about the alkaloid right what are the alkaloids these are these some chemicals these are the chemicals of any kind of plant right and they have the significant role right so codeine anthocyanin gum abrin we know that the natural poison is abrin we already study but uh, studied about that the secondary metabolite answer is the codeine right answer is the codeine now so what is codeine what is anthocyanin what is that gum what is that abrin come to here right that codeine is naturally occurring phenanthrene uh, alkaloid right it is the naturally occurring phenanthrene alkaloid and the opioids opioids we already studied about that in the human health and disease, uh, disease chapter that is drug abuse and alcohol portion right which is antagonistic with the analgesic right the analgesics the anti diarrheal and the anti tussive activities right what is that analgesics that is the it is used as the painkiller antagonistic with the painkillers analgesics right the anti diarrheal that is which prevent the diarrhea loss of the water and the electrolytes and anti tussive activities that is the uh, coughing like that right so that's why this codeine is used in the cough syrups also right sometimes that codeine also causes the palpitation sometimes for some patients right not for the everyone because everyone have the uh, has the different susceptibility for the drugs also right so this codeine is this codeine is an opiate which is used to treat the pain the coughing and the diarrhea clear it is typical used to treat mild to moderate degrees of the pain right as we know that the human body uh, can uh, bear maximum 45 decibel pain right max to max but uh, when we talk about a female uh, uh, female pain bearing capacity specifically at the time of the pregnancy right that labor pain is of 56 decibel right that pain frequency is 56 decibel and uh, the theory is uh, related with that uh, at the time of labor pain uh, the pain is just like the 20 bones are uh, broken at a time the pain is just like that which is high right which is high in intensity so the these codeines uh, are used to treat mild to moderate degrees of the pain right what is the greater benefit of that the greater benefit may occur when it gives uh, in the combination with the paracetamol right when it gets combined with the paracetamol then it will be uh, more beneficial for the patient or a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug such as the aspirin or the ib uh, ibo uh, brufen right ibujesic or the uh, ibuprofen these are used these are the non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs but you know these painkillers have such a harmful effects on the kidneys right clear 
so that's why the doctor suggests that uh, to take uh, less amount of the uh, painkillers clear if there is necessary right then we uh, we will take that so codeine is the natural occurring phenanthrene alkaloid right what is that anthocyanins these anthocyanins are the water soluble vacuolar pigments right these are the water soluble vacuolar pigments which is depending upon the ph right it may appear the reddish the pulp purple blue and black clear the food plants which are rich in anthocyanins including the blueberry that's why the color is blue uh, right the raspberry the black rice right and the black soya bean among many others that are red blue purple or black they uh, carry the anthocyanins right and when we talk about its uh, medicinal value so anthocyanin have the uh, more uh, significance in uh, to treat some diseases right uh, just because of their alkaloids right now come to the gums gums are strictly breakdown products of the plant cell wall right it consists of the polysaccharides the pectins which excluded from the uh, wounds in the bark right which excluded uh, from the wounds in the bark and they are generally water soluble so these are called the gums right and we already know about the abrin in that question right so that's why the secondary metabolite that is alkaloid in nature is the codeine come to the next peptidoglycan present in the bacterial cell envelope right peptidoglycan is present in the bacterial cell envelope which is made up of the cellulose which is a heteropolymer which is an a oligosaccharides and a homopolymer so now first we have to know about the peptidoglycans right what are the peptidoglycans these peptidoglycans which are also known as the murine right these are a polymer right these are the polymers which consist of the sugars and the amino acids right it consists of the sugars and the amino acids that form a mesh like layer outside the plasma membrane of most of the bacteria right and it helps in the formation of the cell wall as well right so the peptidoglycan is also involved in the binary fission during the bacterial cell reproduction right that peptidoglycan is also involved in the binary fission during the bacterial cell reproduction yes we know that the peptidoglycan is the hetero polymer why because it is composed of the polysaccharide chains right which are cross linked through uh, the short peptides right through the short peptides a chemical modification of the peptidoglycan may occur in some bacteria right due to the growth in quite unbalanced medium right so that is the peptidoglycan and that's why according to that the answer is the hetero polymer right the fourth one answer is the hetero polymer now come to the next question right in glycine the r group is replaced by another first question is that what is glycine as we know that the glycine is the name of the amino acids right that glycine is the amino acid which is the building block of the building block material for the protein right which is the building block for the protein and it is not considered as the essential amino acids right we already know that uh, uh, approximately 10 essential amino acids which are uh, found in the human as well as in the uh, sorry in humans uh, for present in the adults as well as in the child right that is vip hall me tum the that is valine isoleucine phenylalanine histidine arginine leucine lysine methionine tryptophan and threonine right these are 10 essential amino acids which are common in the uh, adults and the children right but there are approximately 22 amino acids in which you uh, just you have to know that 20 amino essential amino acids are there right 
uh, according to your syllabus so uh, see that that glycine is not considered as the essential amino acids why because the body can make it right essential amino acids are also known as the indispensable amino acids that mean we the amino acids which cannot be dispensed by the body cells itself right indispensable amino acids clear a typical diet contains about 2 grams of the glycine daily a primary source of the protein rich food including the meat the fish the dairy and the legumes right so this is the glycine it uh, in short right now come to the next the r group is replaced by so what is that r group they are distinguished by the attached functional R group, right, of the 20 amino acids that takes, uh, that makes up the proteins, right. Six of them have the hydrocarbon R groups and the simplest form, uh, simplest of the amino acids, the glycine, has just a hydrogen atom in the position of that R group, right, just a hydrogen atom in the position of that R group. So, clear? Now come to the carboxylic group. What is that carboxylic group? The carboxylic group is any of the class of the organic compound in which the carbon atom is bonded to an oxygen atom by the double bond. Right? You already study that uh, in uh, chemistry right and to a hydroxyl group that is OH group by a single bond and the fourth bond links the carbon atom to a hydrogen atom or uh, to some other univalent combining group right so these are the carboxylic group or which form the carboxylic acids right so the answer is is the Glycine is replaced by the hydrogen group. Clear? Come to the next one that is zwitter ions are ionized species of, right? Our zwitter ions are the ionized species of. So, first one we have to know that what are these zwitter ions, right? Zwitter is a molecule with the functional group, right? That zwitter is a molecule with the functional groups right of which at least one has the positive and one has the negative electric charges right these are called uh, these are called the zwitter ions the net charge of the entire molecule is zero amino acids are the best examples for the zwitter ions right and they contain an amine group which is the basic and the another one that is carboxylic group which is the acidic right so that's why uh, the amino groups has the uh, they are the best example for the zwitter ions now these zwitter ions are of three types that is the acidic amino acid we know that the acidic the basic and some of the neutral also because the entire uh, right the net charge is the zero so all these zwitter uh, zwitter ions are ionized species of the acidic amino acids basic neutral so the answer is the all clear now come to the non-essential amino acids that must be obtained from the food are synthesized in our body are not needed in our body so they are synthesized in our body that is correct they are not obtained from the food these are the essential uh, th this is the character of the essential amino acids right and they are not needed in our our diet our diet right clear so both are the contradictory statement of each other one and three so the answer is two and three statement second and third statement is correct so the answer is four right the non-essential amino acids which uh, cannot be obtained from the food right it can be synthesized in our body and they are not needed in in, uh, in our diet right come to the next the most abundant protein in the animal world is that is the collagen and that is the question of need 
to uh, that is the uh, 2012 right that is the question of pre medical of 2012 that question is asked right the collagen the most abundant protein is collagen that's why the collagen fiber is most abundant in our body and the collagen fiber helps in the repairing of the uh, cells and that's why it is also anti wrinkle right if the collagen fibers are proper in amount in our body then what will happen the wrinkles is not formed because it is related with the tightening of the skin right now what is that chitin the peptidoglycan we already studied about the peptidoglycan there are two new terms for you that is chitin and the hyaluronic acid right so come to the chitin we know that chitin uh, chitin helps in the formation of the exoskeleton uh, of the arthropods like specifically the insects like the cockroaches right and the cell wall of the fungus also so what is that chitin it is a fibrous substances learn that exactly right because they are the question of free medical the chitin is the fibrous substances which consist of the polysaccharides which consists of the polysaccharides and they are the major constituent in the exoskeleton right they are the major constituent in the exoskeleton of the arthropods and the cell wall of the fungus right actually that chitin is the long chain of polymer of the n acetyl glucosamine right that chitin is the long chain polymer of n acetyl glucosamine right which is a derivative of the glucose and that is the question which is asked many times in the previous years exams right clear so you have to learn about anything uh, everything about the chitin now come to the collagen what is that collagen actually that is the protein which is made up of the amino acids and which are in turn uh, uh, sorry which are in turn built of the carbon the oxygen and the hydrogen right so the collagen makes up approximately 30% of the proteins within the body right and these are the tough and the strong structures found all over the body right in the bones in the tendons and the ligaments right now come to the next that is the hyaluronic acid hyaluronic acid is also known as the hyaluron which is a clear uh gooey substance right gooey substance that is naturally produced that is naturally produced by our body even that hyaluronic acid is also present at the uh, male at the outer surface and the upper surface of the male gamete that is the acrosome right the largest amount of it are present in our skin right that is uh, the largest amount of the hyaluronic acid is present in our skin which is responsible for the brightening or the shining right shining of our skin the connective tissues the eyes right so they are present in largest amount in the skin the connective tissues and the eyes and its main function is what to retain the water to keep your tissues well lubricated and moist right that's why if the water content in our body is maintained right because we say that according to some theories our body maximum part of our bo- of our body is made up of the water that is 70 to 80 percent part of our body is formed by the water right so hyaluronic hy- uh, hyaluronic acid has the variety of the uses right so these are the substances right now come to the next question the proteins which catalyzes the the proteins which catalyze right the biochemical reactions in the living world they are called the enzymes actually because they are the they have the catalytic property right that's why the enzymes are also known as sometimes they acts as a catalyst right so the answer is the enzymes hormones we know that hormones are the uh, 
आर मेड अप ऑफ दीज एंजाइम्स आर स्ट्रिक्टली मेड अप ऑफ द प्रोटीन्स बट द हॉर्मोन्स आर मेड अप ऑफ द प्रोटीन्स द अमाइनो एसिड्स राइट एंड द अदर द बायोजेनिक अमाइंस राइट सम कोलेस्ट्रॉल राइट सम अमाउंट ऑफ द कोलेस्ट्रॉल सो हॉर्मोन्स आर नॉट स्ट्रिक्टली द प्रोटीन राइट एंटीबॉडीज आर द प्रोटीन बट दे आर नॉट द कैटेलाइज द बायोकेमिकल रिएक्शंस राइट एंड रिसेप्टर्स सो कम टू द कम हियर when we talk about the enzymes they are the proteins that as acts as a biological catalyst right these catalyst accelerates the chemical reactions and the molecules upon which the enzymes may act they are called the substrate right the molecules on which the enzymes act they are called the substrate and the enzyme convert the substrate into the different molecules right they are known as the products right when the enzyme converts the substrate into a different molecule then it is called the products right now what is hormone hormone is any member of a class of signaling molecules right which provide the signals right and these are produced by the glands in the multicellular organisms like human right and the other animals uh, right that are transported by the circulatory system to the target distant organ to regulate the physiology and they there to control their behavior we know that that's why the hormones are the chemical messengers right these hormones are the first messenger and also known as the chemical messengers right and also known as the chemical messengers right so the hormones have the uh, hormones have the diverse chemical structures and that's why on the basis of that we divide it into major three classes right mainly three classes first one is the eicosanoid second is the steroids and third one is the amino acids which are the protein derivatives like the uh, like they are made up of the amines the peptides and the proteins some have the long proteins some have the short peptides right so these are uh, these are in short about the hormones and as we know that these hormones acts upon the organs by the two uh, by two kinds of receptors first one is the membrane bounded receptor and second one is the nuclear bounded receptors the molecules which cannot cross the cell membrane and have the larger size then they act through the membrane bounded receptors right and all the steroidal all the steroidal hormones with thyroid uh, thyroxin hormone because thyroxin is not steroidal but they can cross the cell membrane they acts through the nuclear receptor right so this is all about the in short it is uh, related with the hormones which are uh, secreted by the endocrine glands in our body that is the glands without duct and they pour their secretion directly into the blood stream right now come to the next that is antibodies antibodies are the proteins and we know that the antibodies in short it is called the capital a small b it represent as the capital a small b which is known as the immunoglobulin which is known as the immunoglobulin that is ig and we already studied uh, we uh, will study it in uh, chapter of immunology how many types of the immunoglobulins are there right what are the functions of these right that iga igg igd ige igm right how they form the structure of the antibodies and all these things which are related with the previous years exam in uh, exam questions right so we'll study in detail in the chapters clear not here it is actually that antibodies are the large y shaped protein right these are the large y shaped protein which is produced by the plasma cells or which is also known as the effector cells right and that is used by these effector cells are used by the immune system to identify and neutralize the foreign objects right 
to identify and neutralize the foreign objects such as the bacteria and the viruses clear so the antibody recognizes a unique part of the foreign target which is called the antigen and that's why the antigen antibody interaction is there and through that interaction the antibodies destroy the foreign antigen in our body and prevent these cells from the infection clear now come to the receptors as we know that the fourth option is receptor what are the receptors the receptors is a protein actually right these receptors is a protein which binds to a specific molecule right these receptors binds with a specific molecule if there is no receptor we cannot be able to that particular molecule right the molecule which bind these are called the ligand right these are called the ligands and these ligands may be any molecule from the inorganic minerals to the organisms which is created organism created proteins right the hormones and the neurotransmitter as well if there is no actually that receptors and these uh, molecules acts as a key and lock theories right they represent the key and lock theory obviously if the that key is related with that right if that key is uh, of that particular lock then we will uh, we will able to open that lock na right and if not then we will not able to open that lock so same these receptors are just like that clear now come to the next question we come to the next question that is the amino acid in a protein are held together by right it's very simple question a question actually we already studied before that the glycosidic bonds are present in the carbohydrates and the starch and all these things right the peptide bonds are related with the proteins right where the hydrogen bonds is present where the phosphodiester bonds are present right so come here uh, that is peptide bonds answer is that peptide bond right what are the peptide bonds these are the chemical bonds these peptide bonds are the chemical bonds which are formed between the two molecules right when the carboxyl group of one molecule reacts with the amino group amino group of the other molecule right the so, uh, and releasing a molecule of water right then that bond is formed of the other molecule and releasing a water molecule right so this is a dehydration synthesis reaction this is a dehydration synthesis reaction which is also known as the condensation reaction which is also known as the condensation reaction and are usually occurs between the amino acids right these con this condensation reaction occurs usually between the amino acids right so that's why the answer is the peptide bond now come to the next what are the glycosidic bonds what are the phosphodiester and what are the hydrogen bonds see that the glycosidic bonds or the glycosidic linkage that is a type of the covalent bond right in detail you uh, you'll study it in the uh, in portion of the chemistry right so just uh, i'll just uh, give some uh, little bit small information regarding that right here which is necessary to understand the biomolecule in terms of the biology right so come to here that glycosidic bond or the glycosidic linkage which is a type of the covalent bond that joins a carbohydrate that a sugar molecule to the another group right which may or may not be other carbohydrate one is carbohydrate that is necessary that is first is the carbohydrate but there is uh, second one is also a carbohydrate it's not necessary right so that is called the uh, glycosidic bond right now come to the phosphodiester bond that is the bond between a sugar group and a phosphate group right 
Phosphodiester bonds are present in between a sugar group and the phosphate group. Such bonds form the sugar phosphate sugar backbone of DNA and RNAs. Right? These are the genetic material of our body. So the diester bonds, what are the diester bonds? The uh, present in between the phosphoric acid and two sugar molecules which links uh, these diester bond links to different nucleotides, right? These diester bonds links to different nucleotides together to form the nucleotide polymers, DNA and the RNA. So, these are called the phosphodiester bonds, right? Now, come to the third, that is the hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond, that is H bond, is primarily a electrostatic force of attraction between the between a hydrogen atom, right, which is covalently, which is covalently bound to a more electronegative atom, right, which is covalently bound to a more electronegative atom or a group, right, particularly the second row element, nitrogen, oxygen the fluorine, right, the hydrogen bond donor and the other electronegative atoms which bearing a lone pair, right, of the electrons, the hydrogen bond receptors. So, in terms of chemistry, you will, uh, uh, you understand better that, right. Now, come to the next question, that is the protein which exhibits the beta pleated structure. So, the first question is that we already uh, know little bit about the protein in previous questions, right? But there is another new term that is beta pleated structure, right? What is that beta pleated structure? First, we solve the question, we have, the, uh, we have to know about that uh, beta pleated structure. So, the, be, these beta pleated sheath is a series of anti-parallel, right? That is the series of anti-parallel chains of covalently linked amino acids with the adjacent chains which are linked by the hydrogen bonds. You can see here, right? That is two or more beta pleated uh, stra uh, strands, right? Uh, which are connected by the hydrogen bonds, right? These are connected with the hydrogen bonds, clear? So, that is uh, the regular folding of each amino acid, see there, see that, right, that is regular folding of each amino acid chain which leads to the regular bleat up pleated pattern across the chains, right, so these are the beta pleated structure. Now, the question is, there are some options, right? The uh, name of the protein which exhibits the beta pleated structure, that is the fibroin, the hemoglobin, the enzyme and the alpha keratin, right? All are the proteinaceous structure, but the answer is the fibroin, right? Why? See that. We already studied about the enzyme in that question, right? The uh, enzymes are the proteins which acts as a biological catalyst. The catalyst accelerates the chemical reactions, all these things, right? Now, come to the next. That is fibroin. What is the fibroin? Fibroin is, a, uh, is an insoluble protein, right? That fibroin is insoluble protein which is present in the silk, right? That fibroin is present in the silk which is produced by the numerous insects and the specifically when we talk about the commercially, uh, commercially most, uh, most used insect silkworm is that the Bombex mori, right? That is the Bombex mori which is also known as the silk moth. So, such as the larva of the Bombex mori, right? And the other moth genera such as the Antheria, the Cricula, the Semia and the Gonometa, right? Clear? So, these are, these form the fibroin which is a insoluble protein present in the silk, right? When we talk about the hemoglobin, as we know that the hemoglobin is the iron in that hemoglobin is a protein molecule but it is also known as the iron containing cells 
साइटोक्रोम रेस्पिरेटरी पिगमेंट राइट दैट इज हीमोग्लोबिन इज आयरन कंटेनिंग साइटोक्रोम रेस्पिरेटरी पिगमेंट साइटोक्रोम बिकॉज इट प्रोवाइड्स द कलर टू द आरबीसीज एंड ड्यू टू द प्रेजेंस ऑफ दैट हीमोग्लोबिन आरबीसीज आर रेड इन अपियरेंस रेडिश इन अपियरेंस एंड बिकॉज इट इट कैरीज द ऑक्सीजन राइट दैट्स वो इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज द रेस्पिरेटरी पिगमेंट सो दैट कैरीज द ऑक्सीजन from the lungs to the body tissues and returns back uh, returns the carbon dioxide from the tissues back to the lungs right so that uh, we can say uh, that hemoglobin in reversible manner according to the requirement they can bind the oxygen then the carbon dioxide right and as we know that the carbon monoxide has the highest affinity towards the hemoglobin than the other after that uh, that is 20 to 25 times uh, more than the carbon di uh, more carbon dioxide than the oxygen right so the least affinity of, of oxygen towards the hemoglobin but least and it's the most important for our body right clear so hemoglobin is made up of four protein molecules that is globin chain 2 alpha and 2 beta right as we know that that is the globin part we already studied about that right that is heme these are arranged in a pyrrole ring because they are attached uh, four pyrrole pyrrole groups are present here and each heme can carry the iron and the oxygen right so in that way what will happen four molecule of oxygen carried by one molecule of the hemoglobin this is the question of pre medical right and about that uh, in detail we'll study in the chapters right clear so as we know that that globin is made up of the four polypeptide chain in adults the alpha 2 and beta 2 in fetuses that is alpha 2 and gamma 2 right so this is all about the hemoglobin in short right now come to that keratin what is that keratin as we know that that keratin is the hard protein right hardest protein is dentine and hardest substance is the enamel but that keratin is one of the family of fibrous structural proteins which are known as the sclero proteins sclero that is sclera that is the skin outer surfaces right actually that alpha keratin is a type of the keratin which is found in the vertebrates and it is the key of structural material which is making up the uh, dry surfaces of the body that is the scales the hairs nails feathers horns hooves callosus right and the outer layer of the skin in the on all the vertebrates right so this is all about the keratin in short right the answer is the fibroin that beta pleated structure is the fibroin and you can see that beta pleated sheath right now come to the next an example of protein with quaternary structure right what is that quaternary structure an example of protein with the quaternary structure so first we uh, before we mark the answer we have to know that what is quaternary structure actually in some proteins are made up of the multiple polypeptide chains right and these chains are called the subunits right when these subunits comes together and they give the protein its quaternary structure right one of the example with the quaternary structure is the hemoglobin so the answer is the hemoglobin 
right but what is that quaternary structure see here right as we know that these are the amino acids right which are arranged in the form of the chain right and that is called the primary protein structure that is the level of the proteins organization right there are four types of protein structure that is the primary secondary tertiary and the quaternary as we know that c that is the beta pleated sheath right when these are uh, on that is the alpha helix right that is the secondary protein structure it occurs when the sequence of amino acids are linked by the hydrogen bonds right and we studied in uh, the beta pleated structure now that is the the regular folding of each amino acid leads to right that is uh, leads to a regular pleated pattern across the chain and what is that beta pleated that is the series of anti parallel chain of the covalently linked amino acids with the adjacent chains linked by the hydrogen bonds so same here right that is linked by the hydrogen bonds now come to the third that is tertiary protein structure right it occurs when the certain attractions are present between the alpha helix and the beta pleated stru uh, structures and that form to combine that uh, these kinds of structures right and come to the next that is quaternary protein structure that is a protein consists of more than one amino acid chain right so that is quaternary quarter that is four right so the, there are four polypeptide chains when the four polypeptide chains are present here that is called the quaternary structure and just we know that about the hemoglobin right hemoglobin structure of hemoglobin and structure of myoglobin is all most same but little bit difference in that so the answer of the quaternary structure is the myoglobin right oh sorry hemoglobin so now what is that myoglobin this is the muscle protein right myoglobin is belongs to the globin superficially of the protein and actually in simple word this is the muscle protein or we can say the muscle hemoglobin actually right as with other globins it consists of the eight alpha helix connected by the loops right and myoglobin contains the 154 amino acids and it contains a poor firing ring with iron at its center right so little bit it is uh, equal to the hemoglobin but not exactly right so that myoglobin is the we can say in short that is muscle hemoglobin which is responsible for the pinkish tinge of the muscles right that myoglobin is responsible for the pinkish tinge of the muscles and actually in muscles these myoglobin reserve the oxygen right they can carry the oxygen as a reserve molecule right now keratin we already know about that that is the fibrous uh, structural protein of the hairs the nails horns hooves feathers wool right and of the epithelial cells in the outermost layer of the skin some keratins also have been found to regulate the key cellular activities such as the cell growth and the protein synthesis right so this is all about that question